some rubbing alcohol, which is probably 40% water or maybe even 60% water and the rest is uh, isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna, you mix this up in a ball just to where it will fall apart and it, it's not gooey. It just, just barely hangs together, if it even hangs together at all. So that when you rub it through a window screen like this, it'll come out in little granulates and when they dry, it'll be somewhat of a rigid little pellets that won't be dusty. Well, if you ever granulated anything, you know that there's a fine line between not wet enough and too wet. Um, so your consistency, you want to be like, it's dry, but if you squeeze it together, it would, it would form a ball, but then it would break apart really easily. If you get too wet, don't attempt to granulate it. Just spread it out and let it dry. You're just going to make a big mess. So I've got my screen here and a piece of plywood underneath it. I'm just going to take this stuff, smash it up into a big clump, and then I'm going to just smear it over the screen. Push it through. And if you flip your screen over, and you've got a bunch of little curly cues on the back, then it's way too wet. And that's what it'll look like. When that dries, it'll be really nice. So the very first part that you need to do when you have your core burner tooling, that's what this is going to be is a core burner rocket. And this, this information only relates to a core burner. So my tooling I bought, it's from the UK and has a tapered spindle. And down here, this is eight millimeters in diameter or five sixteenths of an inch. So if your tooling's different, if it's narrower or larger down here, then your fuel mixture will need to probably be different. So the tube slips over this and you will pound your bentonite clay or kitty litter and that will form a nozzle, okay? But these, the tooling to use to ram this together, it should have lines. See that groove? What that line tells you is when that gets close to the top of your tube, if you go down below inside here, you will jam the tooling on top of the spindle and you'll probably ruin your tooling or you'll just never be able to get this off or you'll mung up the end if it bottoms out. So the first thing you do if you're buying used tooling especially, put, put a piece of the tooling on top of the spindle and measure from the base plate right here to that slot. And this is about seven and seven sixteenths. So right there tells me that I need to have a seven and a half inch tube. If my tube is less than seven and a half inches long, then I will jam the tooling onto the spindle. So your tube, your tube can be longer, but it can't be less than seven and a half. So once we have all the fuel made, we're gonna actually make the motor and the nozzle is made out of bentonite clay, which you can buy, but you could also buy kitty litter, like just cheapo kind. And it's not necessary to buy the actual bentonite clay from like a pyro store because this stuff works fine. I've never had one of these blow up. I've had a, the rocket Kato, which is where the fuel is too fast for the strength of the tube or the size of the nozzle and it actually ruptures the cardboard. So first thing I'm going to do is just put the tube over top of the tooling like that. And this is these are parts where you want to you want to think about what you're doing and actually measure stuff and remember so that you could you have to do this stuff the same or your results will always be inconsistent and you won't know what's wrong. So I'm going to take this is a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to put 3 quarters of a teaspoon in here. So there's three quarters of a teaspoon. Now after I've got that in there, I'd use a rubber mallet or a wooden mallet. Don't use a steel hammer because you'll ruin your tooling for one. But um, I'm just gonna drop the tooling down in here and there's that line. If that line drops below that tube, I'll jam it onto the spindle. 
So I'm just going to hit this like eight times. Then I could take it out with this little bar. And that's what the nozzle would look like. After that point, you can put it back on here. And since I took this off, which you normally wouldn't have to do, I'm just going to drop this back in here and hit it one more time. So I granulated the, the um, fuel. This is what it looks like now. And it's dry, but if you notice, it doesn't leave you any, any dirt really. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in an increment. So you gotta be careful because this tube will fill up real quickly. So I'm just gonna put a heaping teaspoon in here. The funnel. And I'm gonna grab my first set. There's that ring. Just gonna keep adding this. When this stuff's granulated, it takes up a lot more room in the container, but the same amount of oil, whether it's granulated or just powder. Now I've covered up the spindle. So now I could start using this tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my finger, my first knuckle on my pinky finger for a measure. I want to be just where my knuckle would bend. And when, when the fuel burns in the core, it'll burn really fast in just like a second or two. But once 
the core material is gone, the fuel is going to slow down and it'll burn from the end up here. And that's going to be like your time fuse so, kind of. So if your fuel ends up being too fast when it burns to the end, you might have to make a delay compound to slow it down. Or you can make your tube longer and add more fuel. And that I'm just going to use the um, the fuel that I made for the time, and I think it's going to be pretty good. So you can see where I have that at my first knuckle. Now I'm going to cap this off in the end with some of that clay, and I'm just going to use my quarter teaspoon like I used for the nozzle, and I'm going to put the same amount in, which was three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm going to put three level scoops of this in there. And that will be the bulkhead or the end cap or end plug. Okay. That's what you end up with. There we go. That's a finished motor. Now that the motor's finished, I've got some wood glue. Elmer's glue would be fine. Um, you could probably just tape this on, but I found that wood glue sticks very 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 well to cardboard and it kind of soaks in a little bit my problem with hot glue is right now where i live it's like minus 10 degrees fahrenheit so hot glue just it fails on me as soon as it gets cold so what i got here are two pieces of one inch this packing tape it's pretty strong stuff and i've got a stick here it's three eighths of an inch by three eighths and it's 40 inches long. And I'm going to make sure that the nozzle side of the motor is facing down. And I am going to hold the stick down about an inch and a half or two inches or so. Take a bead of wood glue. Like so. I'm just going to press it on here. Then I'm going to take my tape push it into the corner wrap it around like that then look down make sure that the stick is nice and centered on there and then put the other piece on And when that glue dries, they'll be really, really strong. Now that the stick's glued on, the, the clay bulkhead that's in the front, when this motor burns up through right about this area where there's no core, eventually it's going to reach the back of the plug. We need to have a, a pass fire hole so that it will ignite the shell um, black match fuse. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Some people probably use an electric drill, but I don't, I'm not going to do that. So I was drilling through there, and once I got some black crumbs on my hand, I know that I went all the way through. So now when that motor burns up, it'll go through the delay which is where there's no core and blow fire through this hole. 